Fred Armisen. Uh, when I think of Fred, I think of uh, sweet and nice. Yes. When I think of David. Mm -hmm. Porcupine. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Look at this. What I got on my phone. <laughs> What's up? It's just Hello? audio, isn't it? I got to take this. I got to take this. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, a million Deutschmarks. No, Bitcoins. No, flip it for polka dot. Okay. Sorry to take that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get a- Fred Armisen. You better get a show on Netflix. You got a lot. No, <laughs> everyone makes fun of my phone because it has that. I so like I, I really stepped into it and just said, no, I owned it. Fred Armisen, sweet guy. I just saw a sketch of his I'm going to ask him about, but I just saw a sketch of his that's hysterical. He's got a- uh, Haven't we all And he was in the bubble. Fred's in the bubble, and I didn't recognize him because he's wearing a wig. And I said, oh, are you playing a character? I don't know how acting works. Anyway. Fred is uh, extremely versatile, and his, his thing is music. Like he was, he's a real musician, and he's a real drummer. Oh, yeah. He would and sit in on Seth, right? His comedy is always very uh, rhythmic and musical. What about mine? Um, yours is you're, you're the king of snark. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> After Didn't all they used this to time, call that's your all brand I get. of comedy snarky. Yeah, you know, um, Dan Aykroyd said snarky, and I never had heard that term. I mean, either. I don't know when it. And came that was up. way, way back when I was on the show. He goes, "You got snarky down, kid." And I was like, "Snarky?" I thought it was a Canadian word. I don't know. I like when an adult. He's like eighteen months older than me. Listen to me, kid. <laughs> he seems older because he was such a legendary. We we took over Spin Magazine for a month at the old SNL and I got to interview Danny Aykroyd. Oh, yeah. All right, sir. Fair enough, sir. And uh, talked about Blues Brothers and all the cool things I liked. Fred Armisen. Fred Armisen. Uh, um, we keep getting drifting off. Does do. every dialect. He does every musical style. And he's just everywhere. He works like crazy. He's always in stuff. Yeah. You know? And uh, we got to sit down with him and now you get to. So plug it in. Crank it up and break it off. Squeeze it, hone it, shine it, pluck it, wax it. <laughs> and smack it's it on Fred the bing bong. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Fred Freddy. on the bomb. Freddie Armisen. Freddie Armisen. Go. It feels like, Fred, you're the first cast member. Are we starting or is it? What, Start we, this uh, shit. Wait, can you hear me okay? Like, is the mic working okay and all that stuff? I can hear you. Can you hear? Unfortunately, yes. Can you hear me, Fred? Yes. Crystal clear. Can you hear Spade? Yeah. Can you? Can you? Me? Now, yeah. Fred? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh. Ah, I can't trick a trickster. <laughs> Bits? Uh, of all the cast members of SNL, you were had the widest range of... Uh, ethnicities or whatever the word would be that you could play like you could play like any anything from all over the world what was that about it's just that um keep your answer to one hour exactly my mom's venezuelan so uh and my dad is um half korean and half german so i think that they were mm -hmm. you know they're they're immigrants so i think somewhere in there as far as the DNA goes, it, that, that's how it works. You're out. all over, yeah. yeah. But you're not offending anyone because you're you're a part one percent of something. Yes. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. And it just it, that's just how it worked out. And you know how it is over there. Like when they have you know a, a role for you in one of the sketches, you just you know try to do it. You know, I played Tony Montana in a sketch. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I don't know Montana. if I can do that now. I was I whenever I do that because I enjoy doing Scarface, the Tony Montana yeah. accent. I go, I'm doing Al Pacino's bizarre Cuban accent, and that yeah. seems to relax people. Like I'm not making a statement about right. people from from Cuba. It is it is tough if you're just trying to mimic something or mimic a look, which is the whole thing. And some are offensive and some aren't. When you're just going, I'm just trying to do my best to represent that person, whatever that is, voice hair face wigs and then sometimes a wig will be counted as offensive or something about it will be offensive and then more and more as time goes on with me and dana not not as bad with you maybe it was a little tougher a, a little but then I'm, i think it just got tougher as the casts kept really going tough. so as the years kept going that kept changing and, and it probably will keep changing I'm it's guessing. getting tougher yeah. for sure i think yeah. so but i think I, there's stuff i've looked up f with uh, other i call them bandmates your bandmates yeah. From, you know, that era with, uh, you know, line them up. It was as good as any cast by far. 
I mean, you had Maya, you had Amy, you Zeth, you, Maya. Had, you had you had Billy Hader, yeah, you had you had Jason Sudeikis. So you had an all star, Andy Samberg, super, super, and you guys could get away with a lot in two thousand five. I think, yeah, uh, not yeah. so called get away. You could you could expand your your comedy appetites, and then it did evolve into wherever it and is. And get away with stuff. And get away with it. Sounds kind of negative, David. <laughs> no, but listen, first of all, I apologize. My voice is so sexy, but I think I might, I don't know. What? You may have COVID? No, I don't. You I don't because it? I did. No, <laughs> Fred, stop spreading the rumor. <laughs> I have. I went to James Corden yesterday and they gave me a test. So I don't have it, but I just feel, you know what? I just, I, I'm a hard worker. That's my crime. Yeah. Oh, I work so hard. I'm yeah. going to do you, my. Fred, my, you get it. My Christoph Waltz. I'm doing my new Christoph Waltz impression talking about that. So you're a hot worker. That's when I was sent to Sultov, people would say I look like a crazy person on the street. And this is just him in real life. He's yeah. not even. He's like, you're like, you're kind of like him, Fred, in a way. Like you, you hit these rhythms. You do stuff that makes me so happy. And I, you know, I don't like rankings anymore because people ask us what's the best what's the second i'll just say yeah. you're one of my favorites because you're you never pushed they're all such quirky stuff and yeah. even you and and bill Hader's italian a fake italian guy which i love that sketch mm -hmm. just how you you just you're playing it so real <laughs> it just says <laughs> the guy eating <laughs> like i could listen to that forever but Shall we go back to the beginning? <laughs> uh, but Dana, coming from you, I mean, you know, oh, but like walking the halls of of SNL, you, you just came up all the time as like the the stand the gold standard of uh, how to have like an incredible first year. I cannot believe even your first year. Oh yeah, he came out of the gate with yeah. a cold open and never looked back. Once yeah. I had the late, once I had the lady, I I was I was okay, yeah. but. Uh, you came in as a feature player, so and also it was different back then. That the show there was only six of us, me, Phil, Jesus. John, what, and of of, of main players. Wow, but just no wonder you got fed six little birds in the nest. Ah, yeah, ah, ah. <laughs> get a, hey. you got so many worms. We <laughs> 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 Michael <laughs> Winslow. <laughs> And you fucking made fun of me on Kimmel. I'll talk to you after the class. Uh, it, I did it once because you're, you're you're a fan favorite on Kimmel. And then every time I did it, they laugh. So, you know, I'm a comedian. So I'm like, it's like, OK, I go, I'm, I I'm David. I'm sad. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> anyway, but, but, Dave, but David, I did not mean to, I also I, I, I doesn't I didn't want to overlook the fact that you how great you were on SNL as well. I, I didn't mean to swing back. Just you didn't want to gloss over that. So, no, thank you, no. buddy. But I will give it up that data was the gold standard. When I got there, he was already crushing it. And then he just With continued to mow everything. down. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And We're so, recording, right? This is recording. Okay, yes. good. Just want to make <laughs> we'll sure. Put it for your <laughs> clip reel. <laughs> this is called gold. No, but um, I don't know where to start with you. And I want to get to a lot of things. I hope you don't have much to do today. Um, I, I have like, I think four minutes and then we gotta, we gotta wrap it up. Oh, you got okay. a hard, fast. I have a question for him, Dana, before Go he ahead. gets, before you get to really young stuff, because yeah. he hasn't really answered anything yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just talk over him, mm -hmm. but Fred, one of my favorite things that I did not see live, but I saw today was such a great monologue when you, when you acted out, you doing a play about how you got SNL. Yeah. <laughs> like a one, like a one man show. Yeah. It was so, <sighs> it was so weird and quirky and interesting. And I, I loved how you, Dana, he does Lauren's voice in it. Uh, and of course he does it really horribly and nothing like Lauren. Yeah. Just like, hysterical. like a mafia That's, boss or something. Yeah. He goes, I went in his office. And he's like, <laughs> Hey kid, come on. <laughs> That's all written by Seth Meyers. That, that monologue. Oh, for real? Yeah, that was to great. Bottom. He just oh, it was great. Yeah. Cause I thought I just you know when you do that, I picture it at read through. Sometimes monologues for people at home don't get put up at read through because they're not even written till Friday, right? Uh, but you, but if you do it at read through, I was thinking, fuck, he's got to move around and stand yeah, up. Yeah, and so yeah. That that read throughs where you move around are tough. Uh, yeah, you can lose the crowd quickly. Also, Dana, or in, uh, the, in the like performance this. on Wednesday, Fred would go because you walked off the stage and you went up to someone in the audience. Yeah, and yeah. Go, 
What did you ask her? Uh, 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 don't answer. Uh, you know, like, what do you think? Yeah, you, what do you think? What do you think? Have, what do you think? Yeah. And she just a, re- well, that was a real person, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a real person. Yeah, yeah. And then real... she doesn't want to say, so she finally goes, "You think I'm lying? You think I'm lying?" She goes, "No." And you go, "Don't answer, please. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah, you're yeah. ruining it's part it." Part of the show. And then you keep asking her, and then she yeah. just says something else, and you go, "God <laughs> damn, you ruined it." You walk back. Uh, all that was so funny. If you want to look it up, um, thanks. But uh, what I was going to ask you guys is, where at, at read through? What mm-hmm. space did you go to to do stuff where you had to walk? Because you know how difficult it is around a table. Where yeah. where were you when you had to sort of act something out? It was kind of over by. Cheryl Harbour Cheryl? on the piano. There was just a little wedge of a space there. Yeah. And I did one once. I, I really didn't like to do it because it felt like you're trying too hard, but it's I did one worst. once with Ben Stiller playing Bono. I was playing The Edge <laughs> and Dolly Parton had to stand up and we stood and did our little sketch there. Uh-huh. You know, that was the one I remember for you. Did you stand up a lot or move around in the? I, I'm I'm the same. Like I did not like to do it because it was just also, you know, of three sketches before it, you're sort of thinking, okay, where do I have to go? Where do I have to oh. walk to? And like, um, but uh, it was sort of over um, by kind of by the piano, but in between those doors, there's like a main these two mm-hmm. main doors before you go yeah. into that that writer's room. In there looked like looked like a little bit of a stage kind of. Yeah. But God, that was, oh, the entrance to the writers' room. Yes, kind yeah. of, kind of, in front of it, towards the table. But we had so many fucking people jammed in read through room. I mean, it was if people at home can picture like a big sort of square where everyone sits around, all the main cast and Lauren and the host. Yeah, host and Lauren were by the window. I got to sit next to the host Ooh. when Dana left, but before that, I think I sat behind Dana. Uh-huh. And then, <laughs> do you know where you were in that thing? Because it was like three deep. Like people were stacked in there. At the table, I was diagonally across to the left. And I think I was okay. at the same place every year, which I liked. I liked yeah. It. It was like, Once you pick a place, yeah. you kind of stay there. And, and you know, for yeah. people at home again, it's uh, it's like three or four deep and you have every department. You have a rep from every department. So Wiggs will be watching a sketch yeah. like you do and you see him scribbling going, oh, this is going to fucking suck. Yeah, this yeah, guy yeah. needs eight wigs in here. And then mm-hmm. music, if you need them, Cheryl hits the piano or maybe GE's in there and they help a bit. But you're right. It, 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 you know what? It, you don't want to be sweaty. No. And so if you get up to do a bit, everyone's like, this better be three times as funny as it would yeah. have been sitting down. Yeah. Because you've got to walk up to that spot. That's the hard part. You've got to <laughs> yeah, like- a, a five-hour read through and everyone's like, what are yeah. you doing? Because you're snaking through with your little script and, oh, he's moving up there now. Excuse me. And now me, he's going me, to perform. Get, yeah, uh, with a gross. ukulele and, oh, it's-, it's If yeah. it bombs, it's even 10 times Awful. more sickening. Awful. Dead silence. Yeah, that was- Ugh. On a nerve scale of one to ten, I mean, where was read through compared to the actual show? I mean, it had its own terrors. Really. I mean, you know, it it went so long that um, sometimes it just got you know you just get sleepy as it's going. Five anyway, hours, right? Yeah, yeah. four or five so hours. That kind of yeah. dissipates after a while, but it's it's the build up up to your sketch that you know. Oh, you see it coming, and you're like, oh no! And then something kills right before it, and you. Oh go, my god! Oh, it just fucked me. Uh, oh my god oh yeah i'd see like right before it it's like adam's new song i'm like no (laughs) or on give me a chance or something where you you think it's brilliant (laughs) something that you think is brilliant and then when you get there it's the exact opposite and that silence is is the worst yeah when they don't bite in the first joke that you think is really great you think the premise has been set up and you get your first thing and it's it's less than nothing. No, there's there's disdain subconsciously in the room. <laughs> you were and then you got nine it. pages of pain. Yeah, when it, Tom Davis, well, no names, but when Tom Davis would write like a seventeen pager, and and some of them really worked, and if it doesn't work by page four, and, and you feel the whole wave just tap out, everyone leans back. Yeah, and you just go, oh, and if you're in it or if you wrote it, and you're like, please God, let me just <laughs> Lauren, just go to the next one. Don't even. Don't do this to me because I don't want to be like, yeah, da, da. They're just swinging hard. And yeah. everyone already just said, no, not on this one. No, nobody. Even your best friends are like, it's not clicking. And they kind of were quietly going, yeah. So yeah. Fred, you, you <laughs> since we're on SNL, because you were on it. So you come in as a feature and then in two seasons, they you go to the main company. Like, yeah. how, how was that journey? How did that change? And what 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 begot that? I, I felt lucky to even be there at all. You know, even that first show, I didn't know that I was going to get on, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, whatever it was, I kind of liked, there was like less pressure to be a feature player. 
Just this kind of like, yeah. it's okay yeah. if on a couple of shows I play an elf or something. Right. Um, so it, it, <laughs> well, you're not on at all. You, that that happened. That happens you know? a lot. Yeah. yeah. And we had a lot of cast members. So it's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. I kind of liked sort of easing into it. And then, you know, however many, that was like two years later, uh, it, it was like a nice, I don't know. It's like, a, it's a good feeling to, oh, I guess this, I'm actually part of the cast. But it all felt like uh, a, just a lucky break every step of the way. You know, even, and, and not exaggerating, even the audition, even the audition, just being there up on, you know, just at the, you know, the, where the people do the monologues, even I was like, I cannot believe I got this Terrifying. far. Can't believe that, like, I, I'm actually on the stage in front of Lauren Michaels. I was starstruck by Lauren Michaels. And they sit in those little seats, like where totally. the audience at home sits during the monologue in the little chairs yeah. in the front. Yeah. And the theater's oh, empty gross. and the studio's yeah. dead empty and yeah. it's a death march. What were the, like, I, I don't really know your journey, uh, just to go back a little bit, because well, I, I want to talk about your music career and your your mu- musician, musicianship. I just had a little pop earlier. He's a musician and a drummer. <laughs> and, and then you start, did you? How did you get your stuff together that ended up auditioning? Were you going to theater groups for three years, or what was that journey no, from the I was, uh, music for, to uh, comedy? I was doing music for a long time, like all through my twenties. Yeah. I was in a band, and that's all I was going to do. We broke up, and then I started making uh, videos of me interviewing bands and stuff as uh, mm-hmm. different characters. Okay. You know? Yeah, I'm sure they were weird. It was weird, and Funny. you know, and I knew the band, so it was just a little. It was kind of. Uh, and all of a sudden that video, and it was on VHS, like sort of made the rounds. And oh. I started to, um, uh, I would be asked to be on some variety show, you know, some like Cornelius, Cornelius Street, you know, mm-hmm. something where there's a, a couple of comedians and some music. And um, I just started doing characters. I, just, uh, I did this uh, one character who I auditioned with, Felicito, like a, a timbale player. Yeah, it was yeah. like Tito Puente. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, aye, aye, aye. Yeah, that one. And then uh, somewhere in there, like it, it fit into stand up shows. So there would be like all these regular stand ups, and in it, there would be this one weird thing. I would just do, you know, do a character. I don't think there were any mm-hmm. jokes. And that was something that I could um, s- sort of use as an act. And then mm-hmm. Bob Odenkirk. So I started doing this at Largo in LA. And okay. I would do Felicito. I, I did this self-defense expert. I did a bunch of um, <laughs> characters. And, you know, this scene was like where like Zach Galifianakis was, Nick Swardson. Oh, Largo and, is great. Yeah, Largo, Largo. Is, is amazing. Yeah. It was kind of like the only place I performed at. And then Bob Odenkirk uh, had me on a, a pilot for a, a variety, uh, a sketch show called Next for Fox. It was just a pilot. Mm-hmm. And I did these characters and, you know, it, there were sketches with, you know, everyone, there was like, you know, a cast and everything, but I had enough, the pilot didn't go, but I had enough video to send to SNL. Mm -hmm. So we sent it. Did Odenkirk help you with that? Because he's a big deal at SNL. He really, he's responsible for me having all that, all of that together. Before that, I was just, just at Largo. He was the one who sort of made Mm -hmm. the work that I did legitimate to be on a Fox pilot. Sure. And, uh, And he could spot that you were good. He, yeah, he was. A, he's great too. He he's knows amazing. all that yeah. shit. He's he does, amazing. He goes and does like three other great sketch shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah. And then from that video, this um, we sent it into SNL, and uh, Marcy Klein saw it. She showed it to Lauren. Mm-hmm. And then next thing I know, yeah. <laughs> Marcy, uh, who's going to be on our podcast, Marcy's soon. coming on. Yeah, we. She knows dig. where She's, all the bodies the are buried. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, she really, you know, made sure that Lauren saw it the video. Yeah. And from there, then I just, you know, came into audition and I just did this. Was that like five years? Sorry. Just that timeline of what uh, between no, musician it's like and four, it's like four, four. So let's, let's of, yeah, something like that. That was 2002 is when I got on the show. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, 99 is like kind of okay. when I was making those videos, like 98, 99. Yeah. So yeah, whatever that is. And then were, were you ever a, a, a straight, I'm sorry, a, a, a straight stand up or was it never, always like, never, you just came on. I don't want to say variety acts. That sounds like you're reducing it too much. So as characters, you'd go on and do, but that's hard to find stage time. If you don't go in and say, I'm a stand up, they don't know what to do with you. Right. Yes. But there are venues and shows going on that where it works for the show. So yeah. if there's like, if, you know, Pat Oswalt and Paul F. Tompkins and Karen Kilgariff are doing a show, oh, okay. it's like the one little weird thing at the end that right. kind of works with the rest of the show. 
So sure. that was like little, my little paprika at the end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was like my sweet spot. So, <laughs> so I did the audition as Felicito, that Timbali player, and I did him doing impressions and characters. So this way, oh, wow. yes. there's like a way in. It does Liberace. Y- yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, <laughs> so. I did, I did Sam Waterston from Law and Order. <laughs> and can we hear a tiny yeah, one line I can't of that? Picture That's it. such well, a subtle one. Is the that trial a, judge heard the testimony? Why didn't you call nine one one? Why didn't you call the police? Like this, you know? Oh he, yeah, <laughs> that, that's awesome. He just has something like his teeth or yeah, something. There's, very, there's the way that that it's in his. It's in like his. It's skull very and, and, trebly too, yeah. and almost garbly. Yeah, I, I, I kind of want to ask you because these are things that popped in my head. It's like your musicality and your all that. How yeah. do you know, I mean? It's obvious it's informing your comedy, and is that uh, how? How do you find that connection? Like when I when I was a guest host, you wrote a really funny musical thing we're in, and I was watching you just tap it out on some little computer and yeah, just like I don't know if there's been a cast member who was really a musician like you were, and a, and a. a brilliant drummer i thought we'll get to that later but how does that inform your 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 stuff or is it just a completely separate part of your brain no or no you it, think it's, it's just intuitive it's it's completely it was the the only thing i knew you know like mm-hmm. being in bands for that long that's all i knew was music and you know i did have aspirations to you know i i definitely had ambition to be on tv but uh i was just in in bands for so long that that's the only that's all i had was you know the I could do parodies of, of songs or of a style. The one that mm-hmm. we did that you're talking about was like a parody of just like new wave music. The sketch was that yeah. there's a Super Bowl party. There's a, they're watching the Super Bowl and then they <laughs> yeah. pause it because like, they're, let's let this new wave band play. So everyone's really upset and it's really right. new wavy and uh, super kind new of, wavy. Kind of like, uh, yeah, Soft Cell or the Pet Shop Boys or something. Um, but it's just boom, all I knew. And, boom, and, and just the same way that some people, you know, could talk about their families or whatever, or do mm-hmm. Im- impressions. For me, yeah. it was just music is, is like a crutch. It's like my, my only way in. It's a big plus on SNL. If you can weave in music into something, they love it. Yeah. But like so your Sam Waterston is kind of musical, you know, Definitely. it's extenuating him into a, these musical rhythms. <laughs> you know, that's a rim shot. And <laughs> he's like doing a yeah. speed, you know, he's like performing for the the court, you know? Yeah. But picking that out, one and yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. it's like you're playing a cowbell. It's one it's of those like, impressions where you don't know there's an impression, and then you do it, and everyone goes, "Oh right, okay, yeah." Those are good because it's hard to break. It's hard to break ground in impressions and just come up with a new one. But I think that like uh, Lauren is a really musical person. In fact, it's like the, thank it was, you. It was like the first. Oh, thank. Oh, hello. It's it's the uh, <laughs> hello, Fred. Hello. Hello, Hello, <laughs> Do you David. mean as an, an impression of him or as a person? No, as a person. As, yeah. a, as, a, as a person, I think he's such a music fan that oh, yeah. that's where it was easiest for me to connect with him as a person. So for me to talk to him mm-hmm. about all the musical guests he's had on the Ooh, shows, interesting. It, it's a such a quick, easy conversation t- to talk to him about all those music, which I love talking to him about, you know, all the bands that he booked and it's just easy. And he's into it. Like a lot of those were his decisions, booking a lot of those bands. Fred, what do you think of Eagle Eye Cherry? <laughs> Should we do it? I don't know if the year, but. Yeah, hello. I did. A, when I hosted, it was Eagle Eye Cherry. And I go, Marcy, why do I get, I mean, not, no offense, but I didn't know who that was. And then right. the next time I didn't, and, and they go, the formula is big host. We don't need a huge music act. Uh-huh. I go, are you saying I'm a big host? They're like. Well, in this situation, it's a little different. I wait. No, no. I like the first. I don't want to be the exception to the rule. No. So yeah, it's fun to have. I want. I always wanted a big band, but I remember when both both of you hosted. We, those were both really. Did we do something with me, show. you, and Maya? And we were like, and we were dressed like very snooty. And I came to your house or something. And yes, you guys, we were. You, we were this, this design couple. Yes, <laughs> like this Danish design. So we had all these yes. chairs, and the whole joke. Everything's is like uncomfortable. The, the, the design of the chairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, I love Maya. Maya and I did a song too. Who cares? Um, but back to Fred. <laughs> Fred, you're gonna get to talk to toward Fred. the end of this. But great. Um, <laughs> I do have another sketch I like, Dana. I'm gonna tell Fred just to you know. Boost his ego sure, so he doesn't like zone yeah. out. Uh, there have was you ever one, had someone zone out? 
<laughs> a couple. Oh uh, yeah, we have a couple of. No, I don't think so. I, I we always have to scream at them for interrupting me and Dana talking when it's their <laughs> show. Mm-hmm. So you had one called Coat Check, but was that really cut? Is that really wasn't on air? Yes, that's a Cecily Strong one. That's a great and, one. But 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 they put it online, which is kind of the same thing. Oh, it's now. great. I mean, I wish we it's, had fucking online. It, oh my god, I know. Best we wouldn't of have dress. Thought about stuff getting. Can you we imagine? We used to joke about best of dress. Oh, that'll be on best of dress because yeah, it yeah. never gets on. But she was your girlfriend. In it? Yeah, it's so good. Girlfriend. Such a wow. Good okay. Eh. Remember when she kept saying that? You go, hey, we're, we're a couple now. She goes, couple. Wow. Okay. It's so good. <laughs> that was it a was really so weird one. And it was perfect because yeah. it was pretty simple. And you and Dana, he kept asking for his coat. It's hard to explain. Yeah. But I'm like, this how, is not my coat. How does, does this that not a coat I would it? wear? God damn. You know I how know. it is. I mean, but it was seemed like it was working. But I do feel like it made its way on. I mean, oh well, the fact that I saw it, like that's great. If anyone can just see it, yeah. And they, I think they put it online the next day or something. So I, oh, it's that's it, cool. It has it had had its own life for sure. But it was brilliant. Sometimes dresses are a little rough on the edges because you don't even know the fucking lines. You haven't done it since Thursday or something or Friday. No, you don't. And yeah. you're just doing it live. You're like, I did. I rehearsed this once two days ago, and we're already in front of a crowd. It's dress, but you're still like figuring it out and you're remembering the blocking and the air. You kind of go, okay, I know it a little better. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. of That's the fun of dress. I, I, I like that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's also, there are those times where you don't quite understand what, what's happening in the sketch. Like, where am I coming? What am I in this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I have yeah. an accent halfway yeah. through? <laughs> I did a Jack Handy sketch with <laughs> Ro- Robert Mitchum. And neither of us knew what the sketch was about. He right. was a beekeeper in the Himalayas or something. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Handy, you know. So Did Jack Handy stay that. around for you guys or no? No, he was gone already. Have you heard about him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, also his Deep thoughts. work is amazing. You know, it, that yeah. really stood the test of time. It's almost like a fake guy. You hear deep thoughts of Jack Handy. People go, wait, is that a real guy? That's what I thought when I got there. <laughs> Oh, your camera went. Uh, yeah, David, your uh, camera went dark. I know, but David. I'm still, David, still what going. are you? What are you doing? Heather, did your David. lights? Did your I lights work go out? out front? They probably cut through the fucking. Oh, there you are. You're like you're like fading in, but your sound is good. Mm. Jeez, Heather, wow, you made it worse. Wow, <laughs> your oh, there you go. There you go, Ferricito. I didn't think that was possible. You know what? Hashtag mansion probs. <laughs> hey, Fred, did you, what was your, uh, <laughs> <laughs> mansion probs. Uh, your team stuff? What was your favorite? Uh, like, you know, I know you had the Californians, which I was watching that like uh, maybe three weeks ago and you came in and there was, you did it so earnestly. Yeah. Your, your guy. And it just, uh, I don't know. That sketch really kills me. And you did, Others with do you other remember? People. Do you remember the email I sent you, Dana? I I do. I I still can't. I, I David, this is you're, you're gonna like this. Okay, this is a good. This Tell is a good story, what, and what I've, I've told it before, but it's 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 really good. This, you know the Californians. It's all about get finding directions in directions LA. How in every, LA. everyone talks mm-hmm. about directions, right? Mm-hmm. But I had seen Dana. I was with him, and we did a stand up show in San Francisco. And Dana was telling me about his son and he's telling me about his son. He's just like, you know, it's hard to be mad at him because I think he got pulled over or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he does this impression of his son and he goes, no, but no, dad, no, you don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and from that, as we were trying to do like a, a, a California accent, as we're writing the sketch, that kind of came up. It's like, no, but no, dad. And it's kind of the, the way that he talks is based on Dana's impression of his That's son. That's unreal. So I sent him an email before we, before it aired. I was like, "Hey, just so you yes, know, I'm, there's yeah, you know we're that. we're gonna do this sketch called The Californians, and uh, that's it comes from the, your impression of your son. Do, will you do it? How was your son? Like, do it? I've I've done different incarnations of it actually. But no, I'm trying to think, Dad. Uh, uh, but is this uh, pretty much all we're going to do today? <laughs> you know, that's him in the Roman Coliseum, you know. <laughs> why are you getting, I, I like it when kid, young people now say, why are you being so extra? That's the latest thing. Oh, yeah, thing. that's Gross. a good one. What, don't be so extra. That's, that's a beautiful use of language. But that, I, I guess the arbitrariness of that, like 
I think Bill said you got on the soundstage and suddenly you were doing that guy or was it in read through? It's it was like a common it was really it was a bit also we would do at the table. You, you know that moment before you're actually reading the sketches? Mm-hmm. We did like we would, you know, everyone goes to LA in the summer. So mm-hmm. when we came back, we would just start talking like, where were you? Were you in, oh, I was in LA. And like, did you go up Barham? Did you make a left on? <laughs> and then that sort of, you know, oh, yeah. built yeah. up and built. Well, we kept doing it. And then I worked mm-hmm. with this um, writer, James Anderson. And I was like, what, what do we do with this Californians? What can we do with these directions? And he was simply like, why don't we just make it a soap opera? And mm-hmm. so- It's such an odd call though. I know, that. but- That's kind of like the magic of, this is so corny. It's the magic of working with writers that like, I never would have thought of that. And just Mm -hmm. to have someone say, let's make it a soap opera and then it's done. But, um, for, for, for standups who write their own material for, uh, utterly. And when you get on SNL and suddenly somebody is handing you something and you go, wow, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. And it just got handed to me. (laughs) That was revelatory to me. Like, Wow. Or, or yeah. taking, taking your idea and greatly improving it. Like, oh, this is so much better. Yes. So it's, it was uh, exhilarating, really, to, yeah, you to go, collaborate. You go knock on way. anyone's door and you go, we read this once, we have a second. And they go, even down, he goes, you know what? What I might, what I might know, do is, at the end, really- there's something funny about if you just don't ever say that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's all you get. And then you go. And you figure it out. But if they can give you any, anything, just fresh eyes, you know, and they're all smart. So they're all thinking, what's the best for this? That's such a gift. Man. It's, it's the hard best. to get people to write. And they you. care. They care about the piece being good. Right. So their, their, their advice is always the best advice. Oh, I'd see them. If, if you came off something that someone else had written and it worked, there, there was like a little quick little party. Yeah, they love Kind of you. backstage, like yeah, yeah. hugging. Oh man, crushed it. So yeah, that was yeah, a real yeah. high for them. And I didn't really realize till later that at least back then, at least half the writing staff wanted to be performing as yeah. well. They, yeah. just, they, were, they were in the writer's box for a while. And then mm. they, you know, like Bob Odekirk, you know. Yeah. And then he got Conan, out of that. Yeah, they were both on our ours Con- Conan, Conan as well. They'd write themselves in just little things and it, it wouldn't seem to work. They would just, not that they weren't good, but they would be replaced. Maybe we had too many cast members and uh, it was very hard. It was because I was a feature player, very hard to get on. We had too many mouths to feed. And I think that's sort of the norm now, just too many. How many were in your cast? Uh you were in like 22. different casts. I feel like you were. Yeah, he was. You over, like overlapped a me. bridge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was tough when I got there because these guys are. Everyone's a fucking, you know, first ballot hall of famer, and and so you got you know you're gonna do something instead of Phil Hartman. No chance. You, could, you know, Lovitz was even there for a little bit. Dana and Dennis Miller and Jan Hooks and Nora Dunn were Mike, both unreal. Mike oh Myers. God, they were Mike great. Myers. So and then they influxed Farley and. Sandler and Schneider's a very good sketch guy and Chris Rock, uh, Chris Rock and Tim Meadows. So, you know, it's just not enough to go around. It's just, but that's, what, the way it but is. that's, that's your memory of it as a viewer. I never thought of that. I was never like, ah, oh, David Spade isn't getting enough. I was like, <laughs> I was always like, did you yeah. see the thing that he did on update? Yeah. Like, all you need is something for them to remember. Yeah. Yeah. True. And then that's like the, yeah, that's the main memory from it. Never did I and think that And it's better that to be in almost on. less than just make them try to work. Cause I told Dana that the first show I came into, they brought you in a day early and to watch the show and Lovitz yeah. was all depressed. He was only in two things. And he goes, well, Dana's in six. And I go, I said what you said. I said, I've never seen this show and thought someone was light. Still. I just think there's that guy I love. Oh, that's yeah. funny. He's in that. Yeah. I couldn't even, was never counting lines or sketches. And then when I got there, I fell right into it. I, yeah. I preferred personally like to be in two things maybe totally you know oh, or, then, or a third as a supporting on. character yeah, yeah but to, to shepherd a sketch even one where you're kind of the uh executive producer of your sketch yeah is, yeah. is very nice that's why and i was going to ask you about when you hosted snl the difference in that because you you have to really let it go there's you're you're kind of in have to prepare 13 or 14 sketches and then six or eight get cut. So what was that like emotionally for you when you, you came back, you, you let, you did 11 seasons at the time as long as anybody, right? Yeah. Huge run. 
Yeah. And then you come back and host and you come out and do your monologue and they're screaming. It's surreal, isn't it? How did you feel about it? I mean, re- I mean, I loved it so much. Uh, you know, like what a highlight in life, just in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but the experience, you know, of handing everything over, like I really was like, I was still in the mode of like, oh man, I got to take care of all these sketches, make sure I write this much. And mm-hmm. you're doing so much other stuff that everything is taken care of for you. So all these writers yeah. are coming up with stuff. I didn't even have time to think. And then, then it, it just turned out great on its own. So I, I really like that part of it, of just trusting everyone. And then that worked out. I, and I they're mean, laser focused on you. Yes. And they know you. They know what you like to do and what you, you know what, what's going to work. It's such a big transition on the show when you the audience starts to be familiar with you. And I don't know how many shows it takes, but I, you see people all the time who come on unknown and then they, it, they turn it, turn it, Better, better, better. The audience goes, I like you, man or Uh woman. Yeah. And then it gives you so much more confidence. Yes. Because you can feel that they're on your side already as opposed to, is this guy going to make it or is this woman going to make it on the show? And so when did you start to feel that? Like four years in, three years in? That's what I was going to say. I was going to say like three or four years in. Mm -hmm. um, I did this judge. uh, What was his name? Judge Seidlin or something. Uh, And something... He was like the Anna Nicole Smith judge, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, something in there felt like I had to work less, meaning like I was like, oh, please, please like this. It felt a little more like uh, I could come out on update and it was okay. And, They're it, happy. It, and you're right. Like yeah. there's a feeling of, there's like of being familiar that I really liked. But I, something in there, I don't know, three years or something. Yeah, that that I think is that's pretty typical. And yeah. when you were out there with your different bandmates, uh, uh, I, it seemed like you, you know, obviously had Garth and Cat with Kristen yeah. Wiig, who's yeah. supernatural yeah. sketch performer, and then you and Bill Hader, just to me, just had a symbiotic thing as well. We did, we just mixed yeah. really well. And was he someone who, when you got out there and the band's playing, you get they're doing your tie or whatever it is, and you yeah. see Bill, he calms you down. I mean, how where were you on the nerves? scale. <laughs> I was kind of okay on the nerve scale. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know why. I just, you know, I just enjoyed it and had such a great time. But being with Bill um, really felt like uh, I was really with my friend. Like we made each other laugh yeah. so much and we just identified yeah. with each other, supported each other. Something, there was something in that relationship where it just was uh, really supportive and fun all the way. God, he made me laugh all the time. I mean, everybody did, but there was something with him that I felt like we were going through, uh, I don't know, the same experience, you know, being yeah. there. Um, did God, you have a yeah. favorite writer? James, James Anderson, because we wrote so much together. We wrote, we just always ended up writing together. Um, but, you know. To have someone. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, uh, but when you're there, I mean, there's so many people who are so prolific. I remember when I first got there, seeing Tina Fey's work ethic was yeah. incredible. That changed. Yeah. <laughs> I, just to see how focused someone could be on writing uh, without ego, uh, that was like a real, uh, it, it kind of, I was like, that, that's the way to be. That's the way to be a writer. She was, God, she was so good. She can churn it out. Too. She can yeah. just write great jokes, just one after the other. Yeah, I don't know. She has some kind of frequency that just, they come to her. She reminds me of Steve Martin in, in many ways. I don't know why. I just yeah. kind of put them together in some ways. You know, they write great books and yeah. they're they're intellectuals, but they don't wear it on their sleeve at all. You know, No, just, there's a humility to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's still effortless somehow. They just sit down and then all of this stuff starts coming out. Week after week, I I I couldn't believe it. So yeah, she yeah. Was, but everyone, Seth Meyers is uh, also great. Um, sort of uh, selfless and and works really hard. Like he would just work throughout the whole night. Were you hired uh, as a writer performer? No, uh, I was just a, feature player. Just feature, feature player, but yeah. you know how it is. We just we write. Sure, anyway. I'm just saying because Dane and I we ask people because. I was a writer performer. I didn't want to be a writer and they wanted me to be more than they wanted me to be a feature player. Uh-huh. And Schneider, same thing we hired together. But Dana was hired straight cast because he's such a home run hitter and then, but no writing. But that kind of sucks because everyone writes. Yeah. And so you it's like, to. who decides? It's a weird decision to go, you're not a writer, yeah. especially feature because you're just scrambling to get on. So you have to write an update or something. No one even knows you. Yeah. We just accepted it. I mean, it's really just 
uh, yeah. the plat the platform of being on SNL. If you were a, a main player, uh, only Phil did get a writing credit because he had written Pee Wee's Big Adventure with, uh, with Pee Wee Herman. Oh, um, a bad bad apple. But before. I never added that <laughs> a, a problem with remember? it. But I. What one? Oh, yeah. Remember when he goes, I'm a bad, bad apple rotten to the core. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was Phil was, <laughs> He was in jail all the time. <laughs> so, do you mind if we go back a minute and just talk about your drumming? Because sure. I'm just a big fan of drummers, and I have favorite drummers, and uh, I loved your special um, stand-up. For drum drummers? For drummers, yeah. where you just go through at the Great American Music Hall in San yeah, Francisco, yeah, yeah, and all the set, kits set up, and you did all the styles. Yeah, it was yeah. so so great. Did you get a lot of feedback from other musicians and drummers yeah. about how? It's like exactly. First of all, thank you. That's very very kind of you. And um, you, you know, I I love drumming so much. It's like the biggest part of my life, and you know, that's how I got into and whatever showbiz or entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, I just still love watching drummers. I still love playing. And, um, the, the things people have said to me, it's, it's like, it, that was my goal. I was like, I just want something where like drummers can come up to me and feel like they're part of an inside joke that mm -hmm. they can, you know, have like a really heartfelt conversation about like, Oh man, I'm, I'm a drummer and I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's really, that's really gratifying. And that, um, that whole thing with the drum kits, um, was just like it visually looked cool just to have all it these old awesome. kids yeah. and go to the eight. So it was, and you go one like after the other thing. and play all these styles. I yeah. mean, it's such a, a singularity as a, as a stand up special. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. completely its own thing. But thanks. Can, can, Thank you. I, I, I love the way you play. I just would call you just very musical. You have a heavy foot. Um, you're, you're very light mm. on it. You're very organic with it. I just like to mm. watch you play. Oh, Some thanks. drummers, you, you can kind of work with them a little bit. Like, are they going to make it with uh, you? I feel very relaxed. I mean, wow. are, are, what, a, the, what a thing to say. That's so, so. I funny. just, all sincere. Mm. I, I just <laughs> wondered the drummers that uh, inspired you stood out for you. I mean, people, Pepsi Coke, it's always, it was yeah. for my generation with a friend of mine, it was Ringo Starr or or uh rolling stones uh charlie watts charlie watts are you i like you like you have to be one or the other you're either charlie watts or ringo star that was like yeah, back yeah. in the 70s and who were some of your favorites just well my favorite like the the guy who like i really emulated was uh clem burke from blondie and the first mm -hmm. time i ever saw him was on snl whoa and he's because okay. he's like because you know he's um he dresses like in a little suit like he looks like a mod and his mm -hmm. drum kit is set up like it's like this red sparkle kit, like uh, very flat. Yeah. And so the mm -hmm. aesthetics of how he was, I was like, that's a great way to be. So he was like, he's like my favorite drummer. But to your point, I love Ringo. I think, I think everybody loves Ringo. I think there's like a myth I, that like yeah. there's some controversy about it. He doesn't have a bad rap, right? He doesn't rap. No. He's not good. Right? What's the myth? No. The myth, the myth is, is sort of like, well, you know, he's people talk about him like, you know, he's actually a great drummer. Every drummer I know loves Ringo. Even yes. privately, they'll go, no, those are expressive fills. He's, he's oh, great. Everyone loves, Everyone loves him. Everyone loves him. You put on She Loves You on YouTube, a yeah. uh, live remix, and the way he goes to the lower tom, I know he's a left-handed drummer, yeah, yeah. just this little fill. Yeah. Like he did these little fills and they were so electric and it, he gets shinier and brighter just like the whole band does. Yeah. For me personally, I think that it was such a, a wave that is still hitting the, the the sand. We are trying to comprehend why and how that happened. Yeah, that much great music in in, in seventy two months with these four guys. Yeah, he was perfect for them, and everyone knows that sound. Everyone knows you just you can picture you can hear his drumming in your head when you think of any of their songs. You know, yeah, he stylized to the to the to the song. Yeah. So when you're playing with your bands and you came up, you know, kind of Devo Clash. Yeah, 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 all that, that stuff. That type, that type of sound. Yeah. And what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing Devo going. Don't, don't. <laughs> and you're you're kind of probably a ride the pocket guy with 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 some fills, or you just no. Um, they, how would you they, describe your style? Ride the pocket. Guy. Ride the pocket. Well, the ride Jeez. the pocket is a yeah. Like fewer fill. There's this thing that happened. Lingo alert. <laughs> say again you integrate the fills into the beat um, yeah that's yeah that's exactly what i was going to say that in new wave and in punk they had this thing where like they would do these busy beats these beats mm -hmm. that were like that had toms in them 
yeah. you know, throughout. Yeah. So it wasn't a fill. It was just like yeah. da 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 bump up bump 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 bump. <laughs> so the toms were in it without like a, a crash yeah. at the end of it. It was just like that's what the beat was, and that's how I learned. It, um, Alan Myers from Devo played like that. Um, so yeah, it was just it was just part of the beat. So, but it, it was all none of it was complex uh, uh, time signatures. They were all four four. So right. I'm really into like four on the floor, just keep the kick drum going. I like the simplicity of that, but um, yeah, it's like busy, but those aren't fills. Can you play to a, a click track in a studio? Does it throw you or does it help you? It it helps. It's frustrating. I'm like, mm. I, I actually, I don't think I'm great at tempo. I think I speed up. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes I have to, and especially uh, during the pandemic, there was like a lot of stuff that I had to do to a click, but now I'm used to it. So it's frustrating. So for people who don't know, it's like that, that, that yeah. in your headphones. And on the fourth beat, you come in. Yeah. And it sounds like this on the headphones. Is it like looping? It's just so yeah. that you don't lose the, the tempo. Beep, boop, boop, boop. You know, Liederman over there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, He's like Lederman. the producer. Of Do you find yourself drumming, drumming uh, like if you're driving a car or just drumming with your mouth? Yeah, or tapping you know, just away all the time, or tapping on your keyboard fingers, just doing a beat, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, oh, me little, too. <laughs> yeah, when just, you're driving, I just or love stuff. rhythm. Yeah, yeah. Who? What about you? Who's your your favorite drummer? I don't know. The, it. I think over time there is a the most mesmerizing thing I watch a couple times a year. There's so many Buddy Rich solos. There's one I think it's in mm -hmm. black and white. Whatever. To me. uh, his just technical skill is so mesmerizing. Yeah. Uh, and that solo that he does, and he did it over and over again, but it builds to a certain way. And he's got the snare going from super fast to like yeah. just down to nothing and then right back again. And <laughs> no. then he's doing all the fills and all the stuff. Um, but, you know, I was listening to Fleetwood Mac the other day because I have a car stereo that blows my mind. And I just go, man, I love Ooh. Mick Fleetwood. He has a sound and a pocket. It's yeah. so simple, but it it really weights all that brilliant melody. So I kind of I, so I go for the band. Yeah, it's so bassy. I mean, obviously John yeah. Bonham. Everyone says him. I still don't understand yeah. him. I don't know where he got his sound, like his kick drum. the The value of that it, with his snare blows my mind. You know, just the sound of it and how it was. Mic'd, I know. You know, people keep That's trying to Zeppelin. explain it. <laughs> Yeah, people keep trying to explain him his his style to or how he got that sound and i've heard so many different explanations so i've i've heard people say well he's actually very jazzy and he plays lightly it's the way he tuned his drums and i have no mm -hmm. idea I, I i i'm the same i have yeah. no idea how how he got to be that way um Keith Moon, I love. Keith Moon, I could listen to forever. Love Keith Moon. I, I just, just uh, couldn't imagine anyone better. Uh, yeah. Who's who's next? The way Come on. he. Is so busy, but it it's it's so part of the music. Uh, yeah, he's like a genius. He's, he's fun. Like, it's like it's fun to listen to him. Playful play. and fun. Yeah. Oh, David, I feel bad. Bro. We won't talk about drummers. That's I just I'm Thank sorry. You. Jesus. Let's talk about Tinder and how to meet a gal. Yeah. Oh, David. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I look at I'm looking at his Google. He's fear of heights, and he feels bad for everyone he's gone out with. I think I have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so are those your, are those your quotes? These are quotes, yeah. Fear of uh, fear of heights and feel bad for him. Not any, not ever. any. I feel less that way. I mean, that quote oh, from good. a while ago. So I feel less that way as you know, as time has gone on. I feel like older. I'm not married, so I feel like I'm not nailing it somehow along the way. That's, that's not true. That's a uh, that's the, that doesn't have to be the end point because some people do get married and it, it doesn't work out. So. Yeah, I know. So. So go easy on yourself on that. I, I thank you because it is tough because it is, it is, if you really think about it, it's very hard to, to sync that up perfectly. It's very yeah. hard. But I it, it, would I say try. that's true. Yeah. And Dana did it right. And that's why I got to deal with Dana because he, he's had the same beautiful wife for. I was a terrible single person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, I would feel so sorry because that no woman who wanted to be with me was carnal about it if they wanted mm -hmm. a boyfriend he's cute you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and if i was there for other purposes but um i i really enjoy being married i like having a, a, a friend you, you meld into each other we're very she, she's she listens to the podcast yeah so she's our she's now. our Hi, eyes honey. and ears Aww. she's Aww. my uh confidant 
like I run everything by her just because she knows me since 1979. Oh, that's so nice. You know, and she enjoys this podcast. And I go, really? Because I can't listen to myself bloviate. But Fred, can I, you're- you're, Bloviate. You're a- you're a, an emotional character and you're a sensitive character. And uh, I remember you, like we all are, we're clowns yeah. that are wounded, but whatever it, whatever it came from. But I want to ask you first, you you sent me an email after you left SNL and you, yes. you kind of said, how do you process no longer being on the show? We'll speak to that. Yeah, you know? because like, <clears throat> like I, I like the experience of being an ex-cast member because we all get to go back and do stuff. But, yeah. you know, that feeling... I, cause I used to, or still do admire, um, uh, ex cast members. I like how they go on to do other stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, there's something about that tradition, whatever it is, movies, other TV shows. I was like, what is that life like? And, you know, just seeing how Molly Shannon was afterwards and she'd mm-hmm. keep working on stuff. And then, mm-hmm. uh, just watching your career, same, same thing. I was like, what does Dana Carvey do afterwards? And then, every year there's a new feeling like, okay, I'm still kind of there. I know a lot of those cast members. Then another, yeah, I'm talking about SNL. Yeah. Right. And then, then it just turns a couple, over. couple yeah. more yeah. cast members. And in, in about four or five years, all of a sudden it's all new people. And you, there's, you start to see people you do not know. And so um, that feeling, that's what I was asking you about. I was like, what is, what does that look like? What does that feel like? I, I kind of like it. But every year that goes is just like you're further and further away, you know, yeah. from from like the the actual, you know, the blood, the meat of the of the show. Well, how about hosting when you don't know anyone? It's just so much oh, yeah. different because you go, I wish I could host when yeah. I was on the show. And you go, I know right. how this thing works. I know how everyone is and be perfect. First time I hosted, I knew a few people. I think the second time I didn't know yeah. one person. And then you feel scared. Like, oh, I feel like a real host where what does everyone do? Or who's that yeah, person? Yeah. You know, people talking to me. I don't know if they're a cast member. I don't know if they're a writer. I don't know they do. <laughs> yeah. How how do you handle it, Fred? Feel alone. When um, people or other performers or people come up and, and sort of, you know, uh, tell you very, very flattering, sincere things. Like you're in that mode now. I'm sure if you run into cast members now somewhere, yeah. they would be, Fred Armisen, I got to tell you that sketch you did. And it's all it's all a surreal circle and it's still going. And yes. the fact that we're we're part of the continuum is sort yeah. of where the gratitude comes in. But how do you handle people just, Fred Armisen, get out of town. I, 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 it's know? so nice. <laughs> and people yeah. are really kind. People are so nice about it. They say all the right things. They remember mm-hmm. all the sketches that, that that I love. They love doing deep cuts. Someone will mention, you know, a dress rehearsal <laughs> sketch. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it because that's the way I was when, you know, I got to meet whoever, Chevy Chase, you know, whoever it is mm-hmm. that... Um, Lorraine Newman, I'm the same way. So I, I like that. I like that tradition and just people are just, are cool. I don't know what it is. When they get excited, it's nice. also they're, they're, while they're talking to you, they're figuring out other things you've done or other yes. sketches. And they're like, yeah, oh, and yeah. you also, did, oh, because yeah. when yeah. they walk away, they go, oh, I didn't even think that. <laughs> but that's cool. Like I just saw your new girl, your, your new girlfriend sketch where you played Regina or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn, that was funny. Also with, with James Anderson. That was like an intellectual. I just like, you know, someone, it's, that, that's um people who don't like to do small talk. Like every conversation has got to be deep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I know See, like, like that mm-hmm. that premise is uh, just so great, and it's well you know, done. It's uh, rather good. than just church ladies out there, she's no, a religious nutball. <laughs> no. You know? no, it's no. fine. I mean, every era has its own, yeah, its own yeah. style, but just evolution, its own sensibility. Like, once you get to SNL, even back when I was there, you're going, "Fuck!" Every sketch has been done. You think in your head, right? And then it's been 20 more years of just new sketches, but it's yeah. hard to crack the code. It's like writing a song. You go, "This is kind of like." That one they did. This is kind of, uh, you know, it's hard. I know. And the game, the game of which cast was the best. And yeah. you know, you forget all that. It's yeah. Just, the, the current cast is, is, the, is always the best. I, I agree. And also yeah. for every cast, there's always gr- a great enough people in it that you could pick out stuff that is, you know. Yeah. F- that's it's fantastic. Really, and I still, still watch writers. They still, yeah. I look at, I know Dan Bula is a writer there. I, that's the only one I think I know, but these guys come up, I watch the sketches, even if somehow it doesn't work. I I look at the writing and go, shit, man, that was a good idea. You know, or yeah. they did it pretty well, or there's yeah. still good stuff. And they probably get hammered right now about it. Like because like every present cast, there people the are time. mad because the old one's gone. Yeah. 
But I, I, I watch all the time. If you can do, like, you were kind of like a jazz player. I'm just using words loosely. <laughs> but if you can do dry, smart stuff and make it kill with, like, huge laughs, you know, that's always a real rush. And there's some things are more rock and roll and more high energy yeah, and yeah. bass and pushed. And some are kind of subtle and a little different. But when the when you hook the audience on SNL and one of those, it's really fun. I, I got it with Carson. That was it was a very, for my part in that sketch, was very dry. Did you have some favorites, kind of? It's hard to ask people their favorites. No, or that's ones okay. That, I, I don't mind. Like um, you, well, The way you envisioned it and the way it turned out, you know? Like I think, how it, because the thing is, like, as much as I could take credit for it, I got to give credit to Lorne. That's why it's easy to talk about. We do, too. He's, yeah. he's the guy who, you know, on paper, it looks, looks like it's not going to work. And he's the guy who goes, let's put it on and see if it's it's going to work out. And for mm-hmm. me, it was like this comedian I used to do on Update who had yes. no had no punchlines. Like he just would do, open up a newspaper and just point out the <laughs> yeah. headline. <laughs> can you do that on uh, command? Could you do 10 seconds of it? I, I can, it's just kind of like, you know, you pick up the New York Times. He interrupts like, himself. Yeah. And it's just it's just him going like, like look at this. The Congress is going to donate. It's going to have like $8 billion for the Ukraine. You can't. What? You can't. There's no... Uh, on any other day, if any of us, and he just keeps going until <laughs> yeah. there's no, you know, there, there's no, the, this is, there's no punchline. It's just pointing things out and being outraged. It's very, and then, really funny. And then another, then another headline. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't, God, it sounds like I'm, I don't mean to pat myself on the back about it. I, no, I feel you bad. Gotta like, you got to like some of them. Come on. No, that that's a skilled thing. If you try to do it yourself, it's it's difficult. It's it's well, kind of a skillful. If you can get a, a weird bit like that and get it to work, it's fucking huge victory. That's, yeah, it's, and, and it, yeah, and the fact that they put it on update, I just feel like that would. There's no jokes in it, and then uh, you know, and <laughs> but we, you know, we do uh, give Lauren credit for stuff like you just said that yeah. that he will go for the really weird, dry things. Sometimes he likes the rock and roll things. He likes a mix. He likes yeah. big laughs. But he also, let's just see if it works. Everyone has a Lauren impression officially. What what what's your take? I like doing the one. Uh, <laughs> I like doing the one of the of like the warm greeting. So like if <laughs> if, if everyone comes out to dinner, you know, mm-hmm. uh, there's this thing that he does where he sort of uh, is super polite, and if he saw you, he'd say like, "Hello, Dana. Hello, <laughs> David." Yeah. like a very warm um i, yes. I, I, I like that's a, that that's a frequency i've not heard uh-huh but that's no. that's more so yeah, everyone yeah. always is doing this no 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 yeah no 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 you know yeah that that's that's an exaggeration of lorne backpedaling because you misunderstood what he was saying yeah all i'm saying is that this and that oh you mean we shouldn't put it on no 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 then you get them back <laughs> and then you get them back. And but you can't a, imagine mm-hmm. SNL without Lauren. No. I just think he's the, uh, oh, the, the he's obviously the linchpin sensibility wise. I think the the Ivy League guys come in and they respect his intellect. They respect him as a smart person. Yeah, and he has that. And he also likes you know stand ups that r- kind of shoot for the fences. Yeah. Um, before we go, I always and no, we don't have to wrap up because I'm having so much fun. But I always like to ask our guests three things. Sure. Just to just to, I like to put Fred, I'd like to put you at like you know eight, ten, eleven years of age. So a toy, the, and you don't if you don't have to answer, you don't have a toy that you remember that you really liked as a kid, a bicycle that you might have got, and any music or television show or film that really rocked your blew your mind. Uh, in those formative years. So you're saying grade. eight, eight well, like what grade is that? Well, I, I always say five to 12 is the formative years. So like kids, like, like, uh, like kids. being a little kid. Yeah. I had rock and sock and robots to get you started. Oh, yeah. that, they, they didn't last long, but that really blew my mind. Rock Duncan and sock Yo-Yo. and robots. I would say, uh, I think I really liked, I had like $6 million man action oh, figure. Yeah. Fuck. And okay, it had, there you go. it had so many, um, details to it like you could add so Features, much to it yeah yeah oh, like you it, put on little helmets and yeah stuff. yeah little helmets <laughs> it's like a, <laughs> and then like and the eye and the eye you know exactly what i'm talking yeah. about the, the eye, eye like you could look through the eye and it sort of like blinked it had like a it yeah. didn't have a light but like a sort of lens and then if mm-hmm. you rolled off his skin off of his left arm there's mm-hmm. the mechanics of his bionic arm yeah 
Awesome, you know, awesome. it was it was really cool. And uh, you were like, it 10, took a lot probably. of imagination because yeah. it looks cool, but it doesn't really do much. So you've got to kind of make your own scenarios in your head, which is good. Would you, yeah, put it in dirt and stuff and make no, a little it, trench? Or, or, no, yeah, it would be like a little. I can't. I don't know, like a, a rocket ship or some some <laughs> rocket he was in. You know, I don't know. Yeah, okay. you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> some uh, some vehicle of some kind. So there were a lot of things you could get for it that I really liked. Um, bicycle. I had like an. A, the, I'm thinking of the word Apollo. I had an Apollo something, like a yellow one with like a banana mm-hmm. seat. Banana and, seat, yeah. Um, I grew up in the suburbs of New York and uh, I remember endlessly riding with my friends. Mm-hmm. And I was really young, but there was yeah. no sense of like, hey, be careful. None. Uh, you tell us, where, it was just- Not a helmet in the, sight. Nothing. No we helmet. Gone, yeah. You know, main streets, like with traffic and uh, me and my friends would just ride around and forever- all afternoon, not even be dusk. careful, nothing. Oh, no, yeah, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Yeah, and wipeouts, you just had to get home like squeak, 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 yeah, your yeah, legs yeah. bleeding. Yeah, was it if you can look back at a, in a sense memory say, it, that way when you had your I had a stingray kind of a knockoff, but you get on your bike in Saturday morning and you start going and the wind in your, in your hair yeah, and yeah. you're you're pedaling this bike, and then if you go shoot hoops or run around a park or a school. Your bike's just tilted over and yeah. you go and you get your bike with your friends. It's yeah. just sort of magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and the good. aimlessness of it, like also being with your friends and you're just, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> you know, yeah, you, yeah you going know, up hills and yeah. 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 That's it. Just like laughing with them. When it's not a school day and you've got the whole day yeah. to do anything. So it's getting dark. I remember the getting dark part. That's kind of like, yeah. all of a sudden it's like, there's no lights and your friends look different in the light. You know, you got to get home. You're supposed to get home and it's getting darker and darker. Yeah. 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 The best, the best. It's funny that there's dirt involved. I feel like there's a lot of dirt, like fields. Yeah. 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 A park where there was mud. Someone made a little dirt jump. Yeah. Yeah. I could do a wheelie. I could do a wheelie for like a quarter mile. I, I, really? had, I had a, a if you had that loot, like kind of a very light chain. And yeah. I had a yeah, great yeah. heavy back I had a tire. BMX bike. So once I got up, yeah. I was a skateboarder too. I don't know if that helped, but I could do a goddamn wheelie and I was I thought I was King Cock. I had I had medium dick energy. King Cock, yeah. was that a doll that you had too and when, when you were ten? You know, like King Cock. <laughs> that would have been a great doll. So Fred, also just um, I like either TV shows or movies that blew your mind between ages I think, eight I think, and twelve, whatever. I don't know if this was eight and twelve. I think it is, might be. It might be. It could be thirteen. There's no hard. This is just a conversation starter. For some reason, uh, Planet of the Apes jumps out at me as like Ooh. yeah, as, uh, of like the idea that like I thought about Planet of the Apes all the time. So yeah. there was the, there was the, there was the movie, but I, there was still the sort of there was this still like in my head. I'd be like, "Wow, the Statue of Liberty!" and oh, "Wow, yeah. they, they took over!" and you know, there were these, in, <laughs> these intelligent over. dude. These you intelligent saw the age. Statue of Liberty at the end, where you're like, "What the? Yeah, fuck? yeah that it was worked. unreal." I was like, "This." Yeah. No what? way. Where are they? Like, I know. Rod Serling, I guess, came up with that. Did you notice after the spaceship crashed that they, they walked across the desert for like 20 minutes having philosophical arguments, Charles yeah. Heston and the two astronauts, and then they reveal the uh, the monkeys riding horses. Yeah, with the, with the nets, and they're all grabbing With them the and nets stuff. And, the, and the music. Yeah. That was, you know, Bill Hader, your bandmate, he mentioned his one was Taxi Driver. <laughs> what? Yeah, as the what? movie that blew his mind. He saw it when he was young. I mean, I did not. Very dark. No, I saw. It no, I was, I, was a, I was a. I was a grown up. I was a grown oh, yeah. up writing. I, I wouldn't understand it. how crazy that was. I didn't. It no. made me scared or sad or something. Yeah, Bill would have like been like 10, 10 wow. years old or something. But he always, you know. I was like anyway. powder, you know, I'm like very sensitive. So I couldn't handle those movies. Yeah. I saw Taxi Driver. I, I can't blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's Bill Hader. Yeah. I know. No. I, I don't know. His uh, voice is so interesting. And then he, in, he went into a Daniel Day Lewis in, um, there will be blood that was, yeah. his voice was so transformed because his speaking voice, you don't, wouldn't imagine he'd have such a range that he has. Yeah. Cause he Cause goes kind of it, like, it's really basic Hey, when, how are you? And yeah. then he's like, yeah. This is my competition in problem. HW. It's not enough that I, but, um, now what, what do you, about, th- what, what do you, what do you go think ahead. goes on in, in, in Bill's skull? Like where, why <laughs> can he do that? Like, what can, why can he do that with his voice? 
that he can go that deep, but he mm-hmm. talks up here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's uh, unique. I think that's kind of unique. I, that's I a don't, real yeah. physical, it's like it's talent, but th- there's something physical going like on. Like something's wrong yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah, because he, uh, he'll he can go into Howard Stern like really deep. Yeah, like he he goes yeah. really basic. I found that really hard, and I found I found which a guy you did too, Obama, difficult for a oh, long you're time Obama because is of the great. the basiness. That's, <laughs> but I finally got it. That's what we got to do. The thing about Obama, you got to stay calm. That's we're gonna be fine. There's no reason to panic. Uh, no one's got to do a thing. So I finally do them now, and now I feel like I got them. But back in the day, it was like so burr, 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 yeah. down here. We didn't know them as very well, or, I guess. No, yeah. I when I first four years, I did them, didn't work at all. Even his second term, a little more. But I can do them now, and everyone yeah. is successful. We love him. He, he's, yeah. he's no drama Obama. So he's yeah. just, to me, he's just no the drama coolest Obama. guy. That's, yeah. what he, that's what he was. Save the drama for Obama. Did you watch any, uh, for music, since you're a musician, one last question. What was your first, yeah. like, record you bought or the love? Like, Wait, you mean as a little kid? As a little kid. I bought Do You Want to Know a Secret as a 45 in you 1960. You did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I Want to Hold Your Hand was sold out. Yeah. It was Do You Want to Know a Secret? And I don't know if it was Please Please Me. I don't know. Anyway, 45. Please, please Yeah. Me. Mm-hmm. Wait. Listen, where, where, where? Do, da, do, do you want to know a secret? Do, da, do. Wait, Early where, where did where did you grow up? I, I from Montana, but I grew up in the peninsula, uh, San Carlos, 20 miles south of San Francisco. And the Beatles came on Ed Sullivan. And I went down to this little record store. I must have stole some quarters from my dad's stole. pants. Right? <laughs> from, I don't know where I got... I think it was 50 cents for a 45. And I remember it was, I was disappointed because I wanted, I want to hi- hold your hand. And I saw her standing there, you know, but I had three older brothers. So they had probably had them already. I don't know why. That I just memory, picture you, for you. I picture you buying LPs for some reason. Later. Yeah. In the very beginning, I, I we, we were buying both, but all, all of us were buying albums uh, later. And my brothers were, they were older than me. So, but in the beginning wow. it was a 45. Wow, kind of, kind of hip. I know I'm. I'm so old, Fred. I'm. I'm Fred, really. Boring. You wouldn't believe it, Fred. I go way back. Don't let this face fool you. Oh, wow. So you were getting 45s. I um, in early days, and I we bought we I bought the Beach Boy album with my brother, and we yeah. had a band called the Surfers. And my kick drum was a clothes hamper, <laughs> and my Hardy Boys book was my snare drum, and I stole drumsticks from Mickey Hart's drum store. The guy who was in the Grateful Dead. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Welcome to my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my first, did you get, what's your first drum set, by the way? Um, a, a, like, like a, a weird mix. I think a Japanese made, mm-hmm. uh, sort of, I think it was like a knockoff of a Gretsch. Mm-hmm. So it had that right. sort of, uh, you know, pearl inlay to it, yeah. but it was like mm-hmm. f- fake and cheap, Ooh. but it was, it was, but it was great. I loved it. I loved my, my kid. It was like a, you know, we got it used. My dad got it for me. And first record, I think my parents got me The Candyman by um, Sammy Davis Jr. Great oh, really? Oh, yeah, fun. yeah. <laughs> that's like the first memory Candy of like, I mean, wow. I, think, I think I was really little, but the I think that's Candyman. Right. Can- yeah, that's a great one, though. Yeah. Very it is great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sammy Davis was genius. There's a documentary on him, you know, just, and so such a great drummer and great tap yeah, dancer. Talk great about entertainer. rhythm. And then yeah. my, my parents would get me um, Beatles albums uh, and during the seventies, like they were already broken up, but then mm-hmm. I'd get solo albums and stuff like that. And I remember which one Ram, rocked your world? Ram. Yeah. Paul McCartney. Ram. Ram. Ram, oh. Ram is, that's my favorite album ever. A really? Master, that's a masterpiece. What yeah. I love wow. That album. Yeah. It is brilliant. That is probably his best. Solo McCartney? I, I think yeah, he had gems on every album. I don't every even album know Ram and on. I love McCartney. That's how much. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. nineteen this 1971 album that is, boy, that blew my mind. I, st- I, mm. I still listen to it. It's like a weird, it's like a hip, it's like a weird, like country-ish hippie mm-hmm. uh, g- kind of, uh, it's an experimental album, I would say. I don't and know. he won't play those on his tour, right? No, I, I, no, shy I, no about it. I don't think I've ever heard one song from that album. Are you familiar with uh, Arrow Right Through Me from Back to the Egg? 
I think that's Ooh, baby. I, I think I think do, 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 do. It's, yeah. it's one of his best songs because that um, horn oh, part, cool. the horn part at the end is insane. Wow, this is making my day, Fred. Because it turns around weird, like it doesn't land on the yeah. Yeah, Arrow Through Me. God, it's so, so good. Oh, God, Fred, you made my day. Someone else knows Back to the Egg and Arrow. Oh, right come on. Me. I, come I just, on. Jeez, that's awesome. Uh, this is the greatest podcast ever. ever. Anyway, Fred, we love you. We we just say that now. I'm old enough now. I just say I love you to uh, grown I love, men. I love the both of you. <laughs> I admire the both of you. I look up to both of you, and I love hanging out with you guys. And uh, Thank you for chatting, buddy. It's a lot of laughs. And Let's uh, let's have let's have let's have let's have a, a lazy dinner one of these nights in L.A. somewhere. Yes. We'll run into you at Largo. Right. And- yeah, I feel like we I feel like the three the, both of you. I feel like we do run into each other once in a while. I bet we get yeah. along through Largo. Yeah. yeah. And this uh, sushi restaurant we go to right near Largo. I like you never dark say it. Quiet. doesn't matter. Well, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it. I, I There's Boy. no one there. If you go with Sandler or Conan, there's nobody on the street with cameras. Yeah. It's just very no, it's mellow. Good. Great place to have a conversation and hang out. So Fred will go and Dana will buy. Okay. okay. Please do. Oh, baby. You Thank you, Fred. Oh, I love it. And you did the horn oh. part at the end. Anyway. Oh, I love that part. Yeah. So much fun, Fred. Thanks, for, thanks for asking me to do this. This was awesome. All right. L- love Likewise. you, brother. Love you. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? We want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. This is from Chris Height. Question for us. Thank you, Chris. If an SNL bit is cut from the show or is passed up, can you resubmit it the next week? This is a good question because this, uh, thank you, Chris. Mm, you know what it is? The truth is you've got to be careful when you submit because if it doesn't get on, it's got to stink on it. And it just loses about... 30% of its punch for the next time because a resubmit, what they call it, are you, are you resubmitting this? It's already got a negative connotation. I did receptionist. I don't think it got on. Oh, because David Bowie. That, that oh, thing. right. Yeah. And so um, so I resubmitted it, but got it on with MC Hammer. And then uh, I got on with Roseanne. But, but I, he, he's kind of talking about, did you get... Uh, cut from the show or just didn't get it on no the it show? got lost actually it was different it okay. got on okay and made it to read through and then david and bowie then, wanted to switch parts with me oh. and that's when i said i don't think i can oh, then and then it dropped it. yeah yeah oh, mm. rough so i ground control to mr spade <clears throat> called called me in the hotel room i called him oh, oh God. I'll tell you, this that's is the things of snl honestly just when i hear it, david he taught me how to do this dance move once one night in New York with Dennis Bowie? and John Poe. Oh, right, right, right. He is, I, I don't know. I say no one cooler Fuck. than David Bowie was. Fucking hey, yeah. what a Nobody stud. Nobody cool. Just what such a... an artist. And was pretty, pretty fucking cool, dude. Like, uh, gave everyone very a Very nice, yeah. and charming. Liked comedy. Oh, yeah. Was that my young comedian special? Not because of me, but he was in the audience. Really? That would make me nervous. <laughs> Is that I don't fucking want... bananas? Gandhi's in the second row. How do you feel about He's that? He's like, I like that Rob Schneider. Schneider was on it with me. Oh. Drake say there, Jan Karam. We had a fucking wow. big stoler. We had a great like uh, run there with Schneider. Dennis hosting this oh, next like fucking Rob kid. Schneider. What am I, Glico? What um, am I, Glico? Dennis was the host. <laughs> and uh, Bowie's Okay, this crumb. next guy, okay. And Schneider. Some people think he's funny. Let's oh, that, see if it's true or not. This ties into uh, Schneider. He was there. We got the H, uh, HBO special that got us, got mm-hmm. seen by Lauren's office. If something's cut from a show <laughs> and you resubmit it, Thought change it, an it or recast it <laughs> yeah. to give it, if a new host comes in, I think Cowbell might have been cut or didn't make it until Walken came and made history. I got a fever. More Cowbell. That's probably a top 10 sketch. Yeah, time, right? I think, yo, yeah, that's. Uh, and so, yeah, resubmissions are tough, but eventually, hopefully they get, I actually wrote in when Seinfeld's the host, McCartney coming in as a re- re- receptionist show. And uh, 
It didn't get on, so they didn't they didn't even give it to him. You know what I mean? It has oh. to get on first, then they go to him and say, Will you do it? But mm. it didn't get on. So you guys, thank you for your questions. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 